for individuals when they are in public, including penalties for violations. Commencement, commencement date, date and proclaiming and proclaiming that it is effect, effective upon posting in five public places of the city. Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Lurick. Uh, I move the ordinance agenda item number 10 be read only by title and placed on final passage for publication and that only the ordinance summary sheet be submitted for publication. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Lurick and a second by Bray. Uh, Connie, could you please call the roll? Lurick? Yes. Bray? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no. No. This is just the reading. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jared, would you please read the ordinance? Yes, Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Pocatello, a municipal corporation of Idaho, establishing standards for face coverings for individuals when they are in public places, including penalties for violations, and providing that this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon posting in at least five public places of the city. The provisions here are at 12 o'clock a.m. on November 21st, 2020. Thank you. I declare that to be the final reading of the ordinance. Shall the ordinance pass? Mr. No. Mayor? Adamson. No. Oh, hold on. Yes. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Ortega? Yes, thank you. Um, Martin Luther King said, there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. The COVID pandemic has taxed us all this year, and we're all weary of it. It's decimated businesses and hurt families. It's strained our healthcare professionals, not just physically, but emotionally as well. Personally, my family has been directly affected by this pandemic. Relatives and friends with the illness, the death of a close family friend directly from the COVID. My own sister is a physician who has lost a number of otherwise young and healthy patients to this virus. A couple of months ago, we had a room full of healthcare experts, both providers and researchers, recommend a mask ordinance. These people warned that during the winter months and the onset of flu season, we would see huge upticks in cases resulting in overtaxing our hospitals, and we are now exactly where they said we would be. I have received hundreds of emails, both in favor of and opposed to a mask ordinance. Most very reasonable, regardless of position. I have read them all. Some, however, need to be addressed. Many have expressed concerns that a mask mandate will be violating their constitutional rights. I have read the Constitution many times in my life and again today and cannot find any clause or amendment addressing issues of public health. In that situation, the Tenth Amendment then applies. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. There is nothing about wearing a mask temporarily that impedes anyone's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Many are opposed to the mask ordinance because masks do not prevent COVID, and they are correct in their assertion. Masks do not prevent COVID. What we do know, however, is that masks reduce the transmission of communicable diseases, of which COVID is one. Masks are one simple measure that can be taken, along with limiting gatherings, hand washing, and social distancing, which all result in a reduction of the rate of transmission of this communicable disease. Taiwan is a perfect example of how masks and quarantining and contact tracing have essentially eradicated the virus there. They have had one case since April. Some have sent emails threatening not to vote for my reelection or to recall me if I vote in favor of the ordinance. 
To those, all I can say is number one, I have no political ambitions. Number two, it is your recall, it is your right to recall any elected official. But I will not be threatened or intimidated by anyone or any group to vote for anything I don't believe is the right thing for this city as a whole. Lastly, I would just like to say that this city has some serious problems. We have a runaway budget, a murky budget process, no strategic plan, no assessment of efficiency, ridiculous property taxes, lack of economic development, increased poverty and homelessness in our population, which goes hand in hand with increased crime, drug trafficking, and drug use. I don't get any emails regarding any of these issues, but I've received hundreds of emails regarding the use, the issue of wearing a mask temporarily. I would urge all those who took the time to email regarding the mask issue to stay interested and remain involved in all the other issues I have mentioned. And then we can all be a part and work together for the needed changes in our community. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Okay, would you, Connie, would you call the roll? No. Gray? Yes. No. Lurick? Yes. Lurick? Lurick? Yes. Yes. Stevens? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I go to agenda item 11, I want to just state, make one statement. We have people that are out here, people in the lobby, and people outside that are have been protesting. I want to compliment them all. Peaceful, and they've been doing it the correct way. And I appreciate the citizenry of Pocatello and the way that they've been able to handle and and uphold themselves here. So. I want to just publicly thank them for, for their attendance and, and things there. With that, I'm going to run, move to agenda item 11, items from the, uh, the audience. This time it's been set aside to hear items from the audience, not listed on the agenda. 